Well, you're getting ready now to face Leighton Orient, probably champions elective League Two, and fully deserve it as well. But you've five games to go yourself. What do you want? Yeah, well, obviously we want a lot of positive things to take into next season. Uh, we want to look at different things as well in these next five games. Um, but Leighton Orient, I think, have been the outstanding team in the league, comfortably the best team, and they can do a bit of everything, and they do it really well. Um, and they've got good players. Um, we work hard for each other, um, so you know. Obviously, it looks like they're going to win the league, and we congratulate them. Um, but we don't want to be part of the party on Saturday. You know, we've got objectives ourselves that we want to try and hit. In terms of things that you're going to be looking at, is that in terms of team selection? Are you looking to possibly give some players who might not have had as much game time as they would have liked some more? Well, we, we want to win every game. That goes without saying. Um, so we're not just going to chuck players in. Um, that we don't feel are ready. Um, there's certain little things that we want to work on um, leading into next season. So there might be one or two little changes in the team. There might be little changes in formation. Um, but we won't go away too far away from what we're after. But in terms in terms of shape, um, but what we're asking of the players, we might adjust slightly. That's a, a positive that you can take into the, the final five games. The way that you've you know accumulated your points over the last few months that you are clear of, you know, of them unwanted bottom two places? Yeah, I don't think we were ever really in danger of, of getting dragged into that. I, th I think we were, we've got enough ability within the squad to, to stay away from that. It's a shame we've not picked up more points. That's the more frustrating thing. Um, if you look at the goal we've gone through, the, the points we've conceded, um, late on in games particularly, um, is has been a hard one. Um, but like I said, we, we want to be competitive between now and the end of the season. Um, you know, we want to use the Colchester, what happened at Colchester, that can quickly happen again if you're not at the races. Just talking of players who probably were looking to try and get in, you have to recall Tom Booth, unfortunate injury. We'll talk more a bit about that and clear it all up from yourself on James Beadle. But Tom Booth's come back. Would he be one of those players that possibly in your mind that you, you might just be wanting to look at at first team level? Uh, possibly, yeah, um, because we, we see him as, as being in the squad next year, not going out on loan. Um, so it, there's a possibility of getting him some exposure between now and the end of the season. Um, but again, we're mindful that we want to win every every game, but also getting maybe getting some experiences between now and the end of the season. Yeah, and the backup's not too bad, is it either? Because Dave Richards is an experienced goalkeeper who knows his way around. Yeah, he certainly does. You know, he's been here for a long time, hasn't he, Dave? Got picked up a clean sheet. Um, last Saturday, um, really good professional, um, works hard, so when he gets his opportunity he's ready to play. Let's go back to the unfortunate injury for James Beadle, obviously we, we got it all out at the, at the weekend and what we've gone on, but it's been a positive loan hasn't it for all parties, for you as the football club, for him on the personal note and for Brighton. Yeah, I think it's ticked the boxes all round hasn't it, um, he's been exceptional since he's come into the team innocuous little twist of his ankle trying to catch a ball it was that day wasn't it Colchester it was just a horrific day um, Connor Reedon also picked up an injury on that day um, yeah so he's been for the scan Brighton have been absolutely brilliant they've always been in contact um, they've, they've helped us uh, massively in terms of wages etc um, so they, they've been excellent and you know the, the boy like Arthur he's going to have an excellent career and they think really highly of him um, and it'll be something you know we'll obviously keep a close eye on moving into next season. You prompted the next question because you, you've left on good terms, which is brilliant. You know, it not always works out when you bring lone players in, especially a young young lad like like he was, James. You know, eighteen coming out of Brighton up to up to Crew on, on his own. But uh, possibility, with fingers crossed, you could look to try and do something again. Yeah, we we obviously had them conversations already with Brighton. Um, they've obviously got plans for him and how they can progress him because they, they think really highly of him and they should with the performance he's put in. So, look, it's something that we will pursue, but there's, there's going to be other suitors potentially in the league above while there is suitors in the league above. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. You know, I've, I've explained to Brighton what we can offer James in terms of games, etc., um, for next season. Um, but we will there will be competition um, from the league above and then James will have to make his decision. But 
based on what their plans are going to be, they'll, they'll look to put him in the division higher. And of course, for, for you, it, oh, you've answered that one. It was so discussions and you know planning and preparation. I know you've got your eyes on the five games that you've got to play, but football's 24 7, isn't it? It's, 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 it's non stop. You've got to be looking ahead. So, have discussions started? We we we've, we've started planning ahead. We're having regular meetings, um, going through what targets we'll be after, the areas of the pitch we're going to be after. It's extremely difficult at the minute because nobody knows if they're going to be in contract, if they're going to turn contracts down from other clubs, all that type of stuff. Um, but you come up with targets and uh, like the playing, so they're under contract at the minute. And, you know, some have been offered contracts and not sure what they're going to do. So hopefully in the next three to four weeks that'll clear up a little bit more and the things will speed up in terms of what we're after. Um, but yes, we are doing that in the background. But when we're working on the pitch, we're working towards what's coming. Um, the games are important to us, and like I said, we, we we want to pick up as many points between now and the end of the season. Just just wrapping it all up. In your case, you've got a few key players that are running out of contract as well. Have you have you spoke to them? Do you, do you try and try and find out where they are quick? Yeah, we've we've had discussions um, with numbers numerous players, and continued discussions. Um, it's important to find out their thoughts on their future and what, and, and what they're thinking, which can, you know, I'm not saying we, we won't, won't pursue them players to try and keep them at the club, but that can put a plan in place for what if they do leave. Um, so that gives us a chance to work on that side of it. But we're always talking, but we know the players we're talking about without naming names. And they're going to have suitors, aren't they? They're going, they're going to have suitors. Um, so we'll do everything we can to, to keep them at the football club. Um, but in the end, it will be their decision. Well, let's look at the game that is coming up for you at, at, at the weekend. It's, it's a free week for you going into it. They obviously be playing midweek, and then they're coming at home. Where you know, if you're already putting that, it could be party time. But it's going to be somewhere around about ten thousand gate there. Something for you to enjoy and embrace the challenge of your team. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what we've tried to do all season, uh, regardless of who we're playing. Um, I didn't quite realise there'll probably be that many there, Graham, if I'm honest. But uh, no, like I say, congratulations to them. They fully deserve. Um, they're going to get promoted, probably win the league. Um, if, you know, unless a disaster happens. But yeah, we've got to rally shit. Our, our younger players uh, want to play in them type of atmospheres and the grounds and the, the capacities that they're going to have, um, and they can only benefit them moving forward. Well, I looked at the average crowd; it's about eight and a half. So I've put a thousand and a half on right, it to make yeah. it to yeah. make it ten. No, I'm happy. Really look at the averages <laughs> of the crowds. I'm, I'm now, but there like, will be. Won't yeah, I'm just thinking it's going to be out. Yeah, it's just going to be a good, a good atmosphere. Yeah. And, Something for you to play on, and you already mentioned it's gone. I know it's gone yeah. out of your mind, Colchester. That was your last away game, but it's the first of two away fixtures coming up for you. So, what's your approach going to be, knowing where you are? You know, fifty-one points on the board now. Like I said, it's it's about looking at different things without going away too much of what we're after. Um, trying to implement one or two things, trying to see if things work um, with different little setups that we could do within our within our um, system. Um, to, to see if that's going to benefit us moving forward, but we'll still take fans to games. They'll still ex demand points. You know, we're, we're trying stuff and lose the next five games. They ain't going to be happy. So we've got to be mindful that you know we want to win games and look a few couple more wins within the next three weeks. You know, we could end up in mid table. So that's certainly got to be an aim of the players and us. That's a real target, isn't it? There's a group of about four of you there that are all vying for a top half finish. Yeah, and, and I know it's come towards the end of the season and, and people can look at it differently, but it is important that we, we try and collect as many points um, and implement as much stuff as we can. Um, only small stuff um, between now and the end of the season, but the, the, the fans will demand that we go and put performances on and competitive and we'll try and make sure our teams are doing that. And just wrapping all up with the... Injury updates from, from first of all from last weekend's players was one or two went off probably at the time that you wanted to because you've got a strong bench but I'm looking at the likes of Chris Long who, who went off Elliot Nevitt and of course Connor Reno missed the game yeah Connor um, looks like he'll probably miss the game again on Saturday um, there's no point in taking any risk with this type of injury um, so he, he looks like he'll miss the game Longy I thought. You know we were we, we managed the game quite well, so the, the, again get him off the pitch. Um, don't run the risk, particularly he was playing down the left on that side of the pitch. Don't run the risk of of something happening. Um, Callum mainly come off because he was just getting slightly tight, but he's fine. 
Um, we brought Calvin off just because he was he went onto a yellow card, and there's no point again in risking in that. Um, in, in, like I said, we had a strong bench, with good players to come on the pitch who deserve um, some minutes on the pitch. Um, Zach Williams and, and Ryan will be joining in training later on in the week. Um, obviously, the weekend will be will be too much for them pair, uh, but they'll be back in training. So hopefully, we get to see see both of them on the pitch between now and the end of the season. Well, that was a, that was a next question. You've wrapped it up there because I was going to say we're we going to see Ryan Finnegan and Zach Williams again. So that is a fingers crossed. Touch one bonus for you. Yeah, hope so. Um, we've both worked hard doing pitch sessions. Uh, like I say, they'll rejoin the group later on in the week, um, with a view to prob probably next week, not Zach next week, um, but Ryan. Um, so hopefully we can get him some minutes between now and the end of the season.